death row. Suge Knight claims Deion Sanders primetime owes him money for albums. Check out this video. Deion Sanders. Yep. When Prime wanted to be a rapper, he said, I want to be a rapper. He had an agent named Gene, who was a great dude, rest in peace, Gene. I spent over half a million dollars of my own money. I put guys in the studio. I paid down at Austin. I did all these songs, did everything. Wow. Then one day he came to me and said, well, you know, Prime did with um, Nike. And Death Row is a black-owned company. And we don't want to really deal with a black-owned company, even though you pay for everything and you sign, uh, we sign to you, put us on the Interscope label wow. brand. So I go to Jimmy and say, look, I pay for everything. The contract's with me, but could you put him out on Interscope? They're like, oh, yeah, I do that for you. Anything for you, Mr. Knight. And so if I'm at Prime or forming somewhere, I'm taking a private plan to make sure everything's good. But not one day did anybody gave me a dollar back. That's crazy. Not one so so you know, Deion what? Sanders was you, signed to Death Row originally. It, he was only signed to Death Row. Must be the money that they play on uh, uh, commercials yep. and all that. Those checks should have been coming this way, <laughs> you know? Wow. That's, we're not done, y'all. Check out what Sanders had to say in response. So I said to Snoop, I said home. we should reissue, remaster your album because you were signed to Death Row. And I, to I really was, but since it was called Death Row and I was at the height of my endorsements, I couldn't really ride like this. But Snoop, Dance Corrupt, all of them came down to Atlanta to start working on the album. And I remember um, the beat from Lady Rage. I rocked Rough and Tough with my Afro Puffs. That was my beat that Corrupt wrote a track for me. Untouched young black pro, so here we go. My mind stays massive, so check my flow. I'm erotic like Madonna. I'm in a fonda. Way to creep silently like a stealth bomb. You want to tangle from every <laughs> angle you hit. You ain't no prime can rock a microphone like this. Tittle, tatter, bitter, batch of bad ones. I hit them with the force of a magnum. <laughs> when I'm rolling with my homies in the daytime, I regulate things when I display rap. I'm back even though I never left. It's debated how I'm underrated, but the best rewind is the prime time, so check it. Uh, oh, 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 that's corrupt. Oh, that's corrupt. Send that to the DM yeah. right now. <laughs> So I, let me remind people, Suge Knight was one of the most influential and controversial figures in the music industry in the 1990s. Thanks to his role as the CEO of the legendary Death Row Records, which launched the careers of Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and Tupac. However, he claimed he also played a major role in putting another, another name on the map, Deion Sanders, who supposedly did him dirty after linking up with the label. There's no doubt Deion Sanders had uh, continued to live up to the reputation he earned during his playing days since taking over as the head coach of Colorado. As he used the cockiness and swagger that's full, that's still on full display in Boulder to cement himself as the undisputed superstar he was in the 90s. That's, of course, according, according to Connor Toole over at Bro Bible. The, this, the man known as Primetime certainly kept himself busy while simultaneously playing in the NFL and MLB. But in 1994, he decided to throw even more uh, on his plate by adding musical artists to his resume. His debut album wasn't exactly a hit with critics, although he did get a fair amount of airtime thanks to the single Must Be The Money. While it is widely believed Sanders leveraged his friendship with MC Hammer to bring that pivot uh, to fruition, Suge Knight disputed uh, that was actually the case during a uh, recent Conversation with Nick Cannon's podcast where he asserted he dropped hundreds of thousands of dollars to get his career off the ground only to get kicked into the curb. Still by uh, Bro Bible. Sanders previously revealed he was in, interested in signing with Death Row, although his recollection of what went down is a bit different. He implied the name of the label as well as some of the negative attention surrounding it at the time had the potential to put uh, endorsement deals with other brands in jeopardy, which is why he declined to have an official affiliation. Listen, let me tell anybody something that don't know anything about Suge Knight. Suge Knight is on is in prison for a long time. Also, nobody owes Suge Knight money and didn't pay him. Period. In the nineties or ever, the guy would do crazy stuff. He would, literally went to jail for putting a rattlesnake in someone's mailbox. Suge Knight did not not get paid. Suge Knight hung vanilla ice over a balcony to take the rights of his song. This is this is this is false news from Suge Knight. Suge Knight did not spend his own money and didn't get paid. He took all Dre's money and all of the rights to Dre's music when Dre left. 
We know this, this idea that he told Interscope, okay, sure, you can have Dion. I'm not paying my own money. This is this is fanciful. Um, this is not the Suge Knight that we know. Even some of the own artists, like Suge, like Snoop Dogg, uh, said that because they were in a different gang, they were Crips and Suge was blood, they would go to the theater, uh, to the to the studio with guns because it was regular for people to get beat up in the studios by those bloods. So this is just not, this is not what happened. Maybe you had a relationship with Deion Sanders, absolutely, but you did not spend five hundred thousand dollars of your own money. Also, Suge Knight does not own Death Row, so that money wouldn't go to him. If Death Row sued Deion Sanders for money that they put into him, Snoop actually owns all of Death Row, publishing, distribution, and also all of the rights to all of the music. So there's that. Sharon? Well, you said it just about it all, but Mayor, and I think you broke it down perfectly, analyzed it just right. Um, I saw an interview recently with Vanilla Ice. He he did say that, you know, much of that happened. And by the way, all these years later, he was happy to go ahead and sign away and give Suge a couple points on the album. Because, hey, what's, you know, a few points among friends, if you will. I think the larger issue here is Dion is hot. Snoop might want to collab with him. And so let's get the music going again and see what happens with prime time. The song that he had before Mayor was called what? Must be the Must money. Be money. <laughs> right. So, Suge, what are you talking about? Now, come on now. Right. And I mean, like, the idea that Suge is saying that he branded Deion Sanders, he made Deion Sanders cocky. Oh, man. This bravado is absolutely ridiculous. We know Deion Sanders when he was running the 440, which is something athletes do in the combine when they leave in college, going to go to the end. This, this is a man who got out in a tuxedo with no <laughs> shirt on, ran the 40, I forgot. ran straight to his limo, and left. That was I Deion forgot. Sanders. That is that Man. is prime time. He was prime time all the time. And he so, hung out with MC Hammer too. So I mean, Dion had a lot of friends in the entertainment industry. He could still pick up the phone call anybody he wants and get any deal he wants. Yeah, and I think I think like you said, right now might be the perfect time for Snoop or whoever to rekindle that relationship, whatever it was back then. Because he, now it's not just him. He got his son who has the highest paid college athlete ever. Right. He making five million dollars a year as a college quarterback. So maybe Snoop got a, a Sanders group in the making. Prime Let's time. Let's go on tour. Right? <laughs> Here comes the tour, Mayor. 